going to be available to you. There's going to be uh, some uh, training material that's going to be emailed to you. So uh, just uh, sit back and uh, uh, you know uh, take all of this in. Uh, so with that, let me hop over to my environment over here and give you a little bit of a background as to uh, what the wind shuttle uh, forms and workflow uh, suite does. So basically, this is an install that goes on your server, uh, and it deposits, of course, the code and some templates, and it leverages um, as much as possible uh, the different uh, settings in, in uh, SharePoint. Uh, the uh, accessibility, for example, uh, permissions and things like that. That's all uh, managed through SharePoint uh, and the forms that you develop, the workflows, the processes, they all uh, abide by whatever settings you have. So if you don't give someone permission to a site that uh, has a, a process published to it, they will not be able to start a form or participate in the process. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, the, the different site structures and things like that. Uh, if the users don't have permissions to the site, they can't publish forms, uh, they can't publish workflows, uh, and things like that. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a site uh, from one of the templates that I mentioned earlier. Uh, originally, the, the product was just a workflow engine. Uh, that you created a process and you pushed either to a list or a library and you managed its content. So when somebody created a new list entry, let's say, or they uploaded a new document to a library, the workflow would be engaged and uh, it would be routed through your process and then at the end it would be uh, completed and would be released uh, for use if it's a document uh, in a library or if it's a list entry, it would, uh, it would uh, be uh, completed. And uh, so the first thing that I'm going to show you here is uh, the, the original site template here. So I'm going to go to sites and I'm going to create a site. I'm going to call it uh, dot .control and I'll call it uh, DX over here. And when you install, there's two templates there that are deposited. Uh, there's process control document workspace. That's the one for uh, the original product for managing uh, libraries. Uh, and uh, the second one is process controlled form workspace. And that one's used uh, for forms. And I'm going to demo the, uh, the document uh, workspace first just so we can concentrate on, on the designer without worrying about the form. I'm going to inherit permissions from the parent and uh, leave everything else as is. And I'm going to click create. And here's our site. And as you can see, it looks like any other SharePoint site, except it has uh, some uh, uh, web parts that are unique to uh, the Wind Shuttle form and uh, workflow uh, suite. So this first top one here, uh, the Wind Shuttle Explorer, this is actually a front end to a SharePoint library. So if we click on the header there and uh, we go over to the uh, the other tab, we see that it's, uh, it's a library, essentially, and you upload a document to it, and uh, it uh, engages the workflow as soon as you uh, uh, upload the document. So all of your documents that you upload here, uh, they, they would be listed here. Uh, everything that's listed in that library over here, you can also upload them here, uh, will be listed in this web part. And you have different views here. You can do a flat view. You can do the folder view. You can search. You can filter uh, based on the metadata associated with the documents. Um, you know some of the columns in there in, in, in the library. Uh, and uh, the second web part that you have is the Wind Shuttle task list. And this is the web part that will list all of the assignments that you uh, have uh, due for a, a workflow that you're participating in. So when uh, a workflow engages and you have a task to complete in it, there's an email notification that goes out letting you know that uh, you have an assignment to complete. And here there's a couple of uh, listings here that's, uh, that show that uh, stuff has been canceled or assignments. The following activity has been, has been assigned to, in this case, Max Chaya. And it gives you a, a brief uh, uh, description of the task that you're supposed to complete, when you're supposed to complete it, and uh, some options there. Uh, here, this is an approval, so it gives you the option to approve or reject via email. That's been enabled. Uh, there's also a couple 
uh, of other options there. You can go to the site where the task is uh, originating from. You can view the item that's being routed. In the case of document control, it would be the item itself, the file. Uh, in the case of forms, it would be the form. Uh, and the third option listed here is uh, the link to complete your assignment. Uh, and that would uh, open up a browser and uh, take you to your task. You would complete whatever it is that you need to do. Uh, and then uh, click uh, complete or approve or reject depending on the type of uh, assignment that uh, was uh, assigned to you. And it's also including the history of the, uh, of the item. In this case, it lists the originator. That would be the person who uh, started the process, uh, when they started it, uh, and uh, when they submitted it, and who's currently assigned. Uh, so this is the audit trail that accompanies every um, item uh, that you uh, start with a workflow. And uh, that's true for every single one of the tasks. Uh, an email goes out. And along with that email, like I said, uh, you'll have a task listed in this task list web part. And the third uh, web part that we have here is the, the process list. And this is going to list all of the processes that you started. So when you, uh, in the case of documents, uh, when you upload a document, it'll be listed here and you can view uh, where in the process it's located, who's uh, holding up the works, uh, how long it's been sitting there, uh, and you have uh, a couple of options that you can enable and disable. Right now it's empty because there are no processes that are running, but you would have the option to uh, cancel the process uh, or view the history. If you're logged in as an administrator, uh, you have a couple of more options. You can edit a process. That means you change the, the participants. So if it's assigned to <clears throat> John Doe, and uh, you want to change that, you can edit it and uh, ch um, assign it to Jane Doe or something like that. <clears throat> so processes. Uh, this all runs on a workflow being published to this library. And currently, there is no process uh, as associated with it. So we have to create a process. And uh, <clears throat> we use the windshell designer uh, for developing our processes. So I'm going to click on my icon down here. Let's so start up the designer. And <clears throat> we see the tool here. And by default, it has two swim lanes. It uses the swim lane paradigm to uh, define the roles that uh, comprise your process. There's two in there. Uh, the originator, that would be the person who submits uh, the document or starts a new form. And uh, process owner. Process owner is the workflow engine itself. Uh, so that one you would uh, not do anything with. Um, you would just uh, ignore it, either stack it at the top or just leave it where it is, where it is and uh, ignore it. And uh, each workflow has uh, several properties associated with it. There's uh, the assignment notifications that go out. You can configure those. Uh, you can set a duration for the process to run metrics, uh, see which ones were completed on time. By default, it's one unit and the unit is day. You can change this to hours. Uh, depending on the process and what you're trying to monitor. Uh, and you can add swim lanes uh, to, uh, to uh, for as many roles as uh, your process comprises. Now the key to working with the designer is to associate it with a site uh, that you want to publish the workflow to. And uh, we created one over here. So I'm just going to go back to my uh, Internet Explorer, grab the URL for the site. I'm going to copy it, go back to my designer. And there's a property here called SharePoint Site. I'm going to paste it in there, tab out. And it takes about a second or two for it to make the connection. And once it does, you'll see the IDs to the site collection and the site itself. Once you see those, you know that you've made a, a connection to the site. So if I go to my SharePoint list, uh, drop down here, I'm going to see all of the lists, or in this case, uh, also the libraries that are associated with that site. And if you recall, uh, when we took a look at the library where that uh, Explorer web part was uh, bound to, it was called Process Controlled Shared Documents. So that's the one that we want to work with, and I'm going to select it. And uh, just check and see if there are any questions. Nope. Okay, so we've made a connection to the site and the library that we want to work with. And uh, we go to our swim lanes. 
And we can add as many swim lanes as we want. By default, there are two in there, as I mentioned before, but we can add another one. We can do a supervisor swim lane if we want. <clears throat> and uh, that adds a new role, and you can add as many as, uh, as you want. There is no limit. Uh, just keep in mind that the more you add, the more complicated the process is. And typically, when you're developing a workflow, uh, you are automating something that's paper-based for the most part. And uh, you should take that opportunity to optimize it. So, you know, if you have a process that um, on paper says it involves, uh, you know, 40 people, uh, y you can probably optimize it to maybe half. Uh, I I've done um, uh, processes where we started off with 130 possible participants, 130 roles, and in the end we ended up with uh, about 35 after, you know, uh, uh, taking a look and, and really examining how the process behaved uh, uh, in paper versus uh, in uh, electronic form. And uh, we really did a, a good job of uh, optimizing uh, the process and, and uh, minimizing all that, uh, all those roles and everything. So these roles are associated uh, with uh, SharePoint site groups <clears throat> by default. And here uh, in our group property for the supervisor swim lane, uh, we have all of the site groups that are uh, available or have been given access to that uh, site that I created. And I'm going to select home uh, members as the default. This is the default functionality, which means that you can select one of those uh, members of that uh, home members site group and assign them to the supervisor swim lane. This requires that you do this manually, uh, the default functionality. But there are several options uh, uh, to that. You can have it uh, run a query to uh, Active Directory, and based on the originator, it selects their supervisor. Uh, you, if you have a list uh, with uh, some kind of a you know, a table there that uh, has a relationship between the originator and some role. You can also query that. Uh, you can query uh, SQL. You can query a web service. Uh, there's a ton of different options here. Um, but the default setting is uh, to use a site group uh, as the uh, selections for the for the role. And that, that's what we're going to use here in this, uh, in this uh, process that I'm building. So I'm going to click OK, and we see that uh, there's a supervisor swim lane there. And you build your process with nodes, and uh, that would be that toolbar up here at the top. There's, uh, what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 11. Uh, and uh, you have a start node, and that indicates that the uh, process is started. And you need at least, well, you need one of these to have a valid process. And there's also an end node. And this indicates the process has ended. Uh, and you need at least one of these. You can have multiple 